Hello everyone, welcome to the Solidity Fundamentals course. I am Anjali and I will be your guide for this course. Now we are going to begin the course by learning about the blockchain basics. This is important because blockchain is the underlying technology behind smart contracts written in the Solidity language and it's imperative to understand the strengths and limitations of this technology. So let's begin. What is a blockchain? Blockchain is a distributed immutable ledger. Let us have a look at each of these terms individually to understand the underlying technology behind blockchain. First we have distributed. Distributed means the data is divided amongst multiple computers or nodes in the case of blockchain. The concept of decentralization is deeply engraved in the blockchain technology. It means there is no central authority which can claim to be the custodian or the owner of the data. Rather, the data is distributed amongst all the nodes. So each node has a whole copy of blockchain data stored on itself on its local machine. And so there cannot be any tempering with the data or there cannot be a central authority like a client server model, traditional client server model which can claim to have all the data with itself. Also the data is immutable which means that any previous transactions cannot be altered. You can write new transactions and also read previous ones but you cannot edit or delete them. Now this gives a very uh, important characteristic to the blockchain data which is the, the protection from tampering of it. Finally, we have the ledger. Ledger means a database. In this case, it would be a digital database of all the records and transactions. So, all in all, this means that blockchain technology is a technology which is based on having maintaining a digital database of the transactions which are distributed to multiple nodes present in the system and which make sure that the data, past data cannot be altered by anyone. Now let's look at some of the important concepts in the blockchain space. First is hashing. In simple terms, hashing means fingerprints for data. In blockchain, the transactions are written on fixed size blocks. But before adding that block, the block data is encrypted and a unique value called hash is calculated. This hash is calculated using cryptographic functions. Now along with this, the block also points to the hash of the previous block, thereby forming a chain. So cryptography plays a very important role in blockchain technology as it is responsible for not just creating hash values for blocks, but also for data encryption. Consider a scenario where a malicious user enters a system and tries to change the data. The result would be a change in the hash of the block so that the next will block will not have any block to which it is pointing and this will raise an alert in the network. That is why this is known as the fingerprint for data. We are going to see this in detail in a little bit more time. Now moving on to the next concept which is the mining. Mining means adding new blocks of data to a blockchain but this is not an easy job. As in order to add a block, the miners have to solve a complex computational problem. So the request for a transaction makes a race begi begin between the miners to solve a problem first. The winner gets a chance to add the block and once it is validated by other members of the chain, the miner is rewarded with a crypto token and that is not what we know call as the transaction fee or the gas fee. It's kind of an incentive for miners to solve these problems and add blocks. Now this activity which is known as the proof of work is quite energy intensive as it requires a lot of resources for computation but it also helps in securing the network as it's not an easy and quick activity. This brings us to a next concept which is the consensus protocols. Consensus protocols form the backbone of blockchain by helping all the nodes in the network verify the transactions. There are multiple mo protocols for this. Bitcoin follows the proof of work, which is exactly what we have discussed in the mining section. It is working on a maths problem and then others validating it to be the correct solution. This way each transaction is validated and signed and the chain is secured. We also have proof of stake where a validator is picked and assigned a block 
but the miner has to stake a part of his crypto in case his transaction is invalidated. This protocol is not energy intensive and so Ethereum, one of the most popular blockchain, has decided to move this in, uh, move itself into the proof of stake protocol by the end of 2022. This has been named as the merge and is one of the biggest events being talked about. Now let's talk about the block which is a basic unit of blockchain. As we have discussed previously, all the blocks are tied to each other in the form of a chain in the case of blockchain. The very first block is known as the genesis block. As you can see that the previous hash for genesis block is null or all zeros as it is the very first block. But depending upon the data of the genesis block, a unique hash value has been created for it. So now when a new transaction request is made to add a new block into the blockchain that is the block 2 with data Thursday, a new hash value is calculated for this block and there is also an attribute called as previous hash which links to the genesis block. In the similar fashion, we have a third block where a data fingerprint is written and the hash value for which is calculated but it also points to the previous hash that is the block 2. Now imagine a malicious user enters the system and tries to change the data of block 2 from Thursday to Friday. What will happen? The, the hash value for the block 2 would change from A4CE to some other variables. Now the block 3 will immediately recognize that the block to which it was pointing is no more existing. So now it will raise an alert in the system and all the nodes would join together to validate the block. Since more than 50% of the blocks will have a block with hash value different than the node which was having the tampered value, this block will be removed and the other blocks from the other nodes would be copied here. This is how an attack is prevented in blockchain. Now that we have discussed the important concepts, let's quickly see what is exactly is a blockchain process. First of all, a request for a transaction is made. Whether this means that you are deploying a smart contract or you are storing some data on chain, everything is in the form of a transaction and a request is made. Then this transaction data is logged and compiled into a block. After the block is finished, it is distributed to every user or node in the blockchain network. All the nodes in the network now start working to verify this block. After the block has been verified, it is added to the chain. Finally, the transaction is marked complete and is part of the digital ledger. This is the reason why in blockchain there is a time gap between the initiation of a transaction and the completion of it. There are multiple steps in between which are required to mark the transaction to be complete. Now let's discuss about some popular blockchains. Of course, Bitcoin is the most popular blockchain and the oldest one. It was launched in 2009 by an anonymous person called Satoshi Nakamoto. Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency. A lot of people confuse Bitcoin with blockchain. So it's important to note that Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency which uses blockchain as its underlying technology. And as we have discussed before, Bitcoin uses the proof of work consensus protocol, which means that for a new block of transactions to be added, a um, burdensome maths problem must be solved and the miner who solves this problem first will be rewarded with some bitcoins. So this is the consensus protocol which is followed by bitcoin. Another popular blockchain to be discussed is ethereum. This is going to be the most talked blockchain in our course because the language solidity is used to write smart contracts which are deployed on this blockchain. It was launched in 2015 and it was built on Bitcoin's innovation, but there are some big differences between the two chains. Ethereum is programmable, which means that you can build apps that uses the blockchain to store data or control what your app can do. This is not possible in the case of Bitcoin. While Bitcoin is only a payment network, Ethereum is more like a marketplace of financial services, games, social networks and other apps that respect your privacy and cannot censor you. Also, Ethereum has a native cryptocurrency token of its own, which is known as the Ether. 
So other than Bitcoin and Ethereum, we have many other blockchains as well. For example, we have Solana, Polygon, Polkadot, Binance and many more. All these blockchains have their own unique features and capabilities. But in our course, we are going to discuss about the Ethereum blockchain the most because as I told you, all the smart contracts, they are deployed on the EVM that is the Ethereum virtual machine. So that's it for today's uh, video. I hope you like the lecture. See you in the next one.